In a sport where there is such a huge emphasis on car performance to the point where, very commonly, it's only teammates fighting for a title between themselves, sometimes the only way to judge drivers is how they do against their teammates in equal machinery. With that being said, one of the most underrated conversations and aspects of Formula 1 that I don't see too many fans giving enough respect to is about the drivers who have faced the toughest teammates in the same car when comparisons can actually be made. In researching this, I couldn't find a single video, article, or even Reddit thread talking about who in Formula 1 has gone up against the highest level of competition throughout their career. And so here I am answering the question that literally no one has been asking. And now, the way I'm going to structure this video is a good old fashioned top 5, and there's a few ground rules that I want to explain. I'm only going to include world champions on my list because for my criteria, I've tried to consider the amount of other world champions that they've gone up against, the longevity of how long they went up against those great teammates, and also the level of success that they had against those drivers as well. So for example, drivers like Felipe Massa who went up against Schumacher, Raikkonen and Alonso won't be on my list, but I did think he was worth giving a shout out. I've also only included drivers from the 1980s onwards because, if I'm being honest, that's kind of where my knowledge of drivers really begins, and if I'm making a genuine top 5, I try to talk about drivers that I've either seen for myself or had the chance to go back and rewatch some of their older seasons and championships. Also, before the 80s, it was still common to sometimes have more than two drivers in a single team for random races, which I don't know why was still allowed back then, and it just complicates the criteria that I had. I will also point out that in some cases, some of the teammates at the point when those drivers went up against them might not have been world champions at the time because they won it later on. An example being Alonso and Hamilton in 2007. Whilst Lewis wasn't a champion yet, he was still a championship caliber talent, and so I've still counted those drivers as either being champions at the time or in the future. First up is Jensen Button. And now, JB had a very long and relatively successful career having the fifth most starts in Formula 1. During this time, he went up against three world champions in Villeneuve, Hamilton and Alonso, as well as quality midfield drivers like Ralf Schumacher and Rubens Barrichello. Throughout this video, a word that I'm going to mention a lot is context. And the important context with JB is that he didn't really get competitive machinery for that long in his career at all. Apart from his debut win in 2006, all of his other 14 career wins came within a four year span between 2009 and 2012, meaning that he never really had consistent race winning cars. And the bigger problem is that during this time, he spent three years as teammate to Lewis Hamilton. Even though JB actually did beat Lewis in 2011, when Lewis had, in my opinion, still his worst ever season in Formula 1, whenever the McLaren did become even an outsider for the title, it was always Lewis who was able to step up a gear to actually compete for a championship. In terms of his one year partnership with Villeneuve, that was also a pretty remarkable season. At the time, JB was still trying to find a long-term home in Formula 1 where he could start building his roots. And stepping into BAR, which was basically built around Villeneuve, he beat him in his first season there, causing the team to drop Villeneuve at the end of the year. And from there, Villeneuve's career never really recovered, meaning that JB basically ended a world champion's career in just his fourth year in Formula 1. His partnership with Fernando Alonso also stands out as one of the biggest wasted opportunities in F1 history. When the car actually worked and wasn't on fire, which wasn't much during the McLaren Honda era, generally speaking, Fernando always had the measure over JB, but the combination of two very experienced world champions still in their absolute prime was just criminally wasted. I still maintain that the combination of Alonso and JB is one of the greatest driver pairings we've ever seen, but because they only ever had backmarker machinery, they were never really able to compete for anything meaningful. It's a truly forgotten great F1 lineup, and if you put them on the grid today as teammates, I think there's a good argument to be made that it's a better lineup than Leclerc and Sainz, or even Hamilton and Russell. And next up on the list is Damon Hill. When looking at his best teammates, he went up against four world champions in Prost, Senna, Mansell, and Villeneuve, 
Although it must be said, he only did a combined seven races against Senna and Mansell in 1994 because of the chaotic drive situation after Ayrton's death at Imola. Outside of those champions, he also had drivers like Ralf Schumacher and Heinz Harald Frensen as teammates, who again were top quality midfield drivers, as evidenced by the fact that in 1999, whilst both Hill and Frensen were teammates, Frensen actually went on to challenge for the title that season. Damon stands out amongst my list as arguably the most unique driver. Relatively speaking, he actually had a really short career compared to the other drivers at just eight seasons. He also didn't have as much success as some of the other drivers against those all-time greats, but the fact that he had so many strong teammates during such a short period of time is what made me have to include Hill on this list. The reason why Damon Hill stands out is that he came into Formula 1 as purely a number 2 at Williams, finding himself in championship winning cars and up against all-time great drivers right from the beginning of his career. He kind of ended up against great teammates through circumstance at being the safe number 2 option at Williams, but that's also why the team never really trusted him as a number 1 driver, even when he did show signs of stepping up against Michael Schumacher and fighting for the title in 1994. That is why they then tried to bring back Mansell, sign Coulthard as the next big thing, and when Coulthard left early, bring in Vilner from IndyCar, again with the objective to supersede Damon. Even though the likes of Coulthard and Villeneuve were very young when Damon beat them on his way to the 96 title, and even though for various reasons he never had the chance to spend a full season with the likes of Senna or Mansell, I still think to have all of those drivers as your teammate is a serious level of competition for an 8 year career. If you're simply looking for the answer as to who in F1 throughout all of their career has gone up against the highest number of world champions, then the answer is Nigel Mansell. In total, Mansell went up against six world champions in Andretti, Keke Rosberg, PK, Prost, Hill, and Hakkinen. But what's even more amazing is that, as far as his other teammates in De Angelis, Berger, and Patrese, all of them are also race winners, meaning that every single teammate that Mansell ever had has been, at the bare minimum, a multiple time Grand Prix winner. The only reason why Mansell isn't perhaps higher on this list is because when it comes to Mario Andretti, Damon Hill and Mika Hakkinen, he only did a combined 9 races against all of those drivers. In the case of Mario Andretti for example, that was a situation where as I mentioned earlier, Lotus actually ran 3 cars during one race when Mansell made his debut with De Angelis being the other teammate. And so not only does it inflate the quality of Mansell's teammates when you can have three drivers in one team, but he also didn't race alongside Andretti, Hill and Hakkinen for long enough for me to really value them more in this context. Having said that, I don't want to take anything away when it comes to the quality of competition that Mansell had over the course of his career. At Williams he went up against really tough teammates in Keke Rosberg and PK. And although he technically only beat them once in the championship, at no point did he ever look like a number 2 driver. This was not a Perez or Bottas situation. Although Mansell wasn't a world champion at the time, he definitely commanded the respect of one because of how competitive he was against the greats during that era. When you go up against drivers of this caliber, there is always going to be egos involved, and it's no secret that at Williams with PK and at Ferrari with Prost, those relationships didn't exactly end well. Eventually when Mansell won the title in 92 in the all-conquering Williams FW14B, it was with a much more conventional number 2 teammate in Patrese. But I think the legacy of Mansell and the level of competition that he faced is that, although he might be just a one-time world champion, make no mistake, this was a man who under very different circumstances easily had the talent, speed and mentality to win 2 or 3. And next up is Lewis Hamilton. Lewis has gone up against 3 world championship drivers during his career in Alonso Button and Nico Rosberg as well as drivers like Bottas and Russell. And similar to Mansell, every single one of Lewis's teammates has been at the bare minimum a Grand Prix winner. With Lewis context is once again very important. Going up against and beating Fernando Alonso as a rookie still remains one of the greatest achievements by any driver in F1 history. 
And I think what really puts Lewis high up on this list is, unlike as I mentioned with Mansell who only spent a combined 4 years with Keke Rosberg, PK and Prost, Lewis spent a combined 8 years with his championship caliber teammates and it's that quality of teammates and longevity that puts him over the top. Lewis is also in the unique position where, because he's still racing, when it comes to George Russell, there is still every chance that if George can live up to his potential and win a championship after Lewis retires, it would retrospectively increase the number of championship caliber teammates that Lewis has had and the time that he has spent going up against them. Although he's always had good cars, what seems to never get mentioned anywhere near as much is that he's also had very strong teammates in those good cars for large portions of his career. That period where he had Button and Rosberg as his teammate was when those drivers were in their absolute primes. And unlike when Button was teammates with Alonso in those terrible McLarens, because with Lewis the cars were actually competitive and because of Lewis himself, I think it brought out the best in both of those drivers and forced them to elevate their level to a point which I don't think they would have otherwise done so. To me the fact that he got beaten by Button once in 2011 and Rosberg once in 2016 is not an indictment on Lewis because those drivers were already great before they became teammates with Lewis and they either already were or became champions for a reason. It must be said in an alternative universe where perhaps Hamilton only ever has Bottas level teammates, he probably wins the 07 and 08 titles at McLaren and then when he still moves to Mercedes also wins the 7 straight titles from 14 to 20 making him hypothetically a 9 time world champion. Does missing out on those two titles somehow diminish Hamilton's legacy? If anything to me a big part of his legacy when we look back isn't just how much he won but the caliber of drivers that he wasn't afraid to go up against in the same machinery throughout his career. Even before I decided to make this list and even before I had the idea of making this video, the number one driver to me was never in doubt. Alain Prost is the driver who in my opinion has gone up against the hardest teammates in Formula 1 history, going up against 5 world championship teammates in Lauda, Rosberg, Senna, Mansell and Hill as well as other high quality drivers from the era such as René Arnu and Jean Alesi. Unlike with Mansell who had a higher number of championship teammates, every single champion that Prost went up against he spent an entire season with at the team rather than in some cases just doing 2 or 3 races. Damon Hill is the obvious outlier because Hill at the time was only going into his first full season in Formula 1 but it's that crazy trio of Lauda, Senna and Mansell which is just the hardest run of teammates anyone has ever had. Against those drivers, Prost only lost twice, once to Lauda in 1984 by just half a point in the fight for the championship, which I'm pretty sure is a record that's mathematically impossible to beat in modern Formula 1, and then once to Senna in 1988, although again it must be said, because of the terrible point system back then, which basically dropped some of your results, had every single race counted like it does now, Prost would have outscored Senna in both 1988 and 1989. There is so many things to say about Alain Prost but to put it simply, this is a man that won 4 championships and retired in 1993 with at the time more Grand Prix wins than any other driver in Formula 1 history and he did all of that against a level of competition in the same car that no one as of yet has ever gone up against. Even when he left McLaren after winning the title in 89 because things had gotten so toxic with Senna, or whilst he could have gone into a Williams with a comfortable number 2 driver, he decided to step straight into a team that already had an all time great number 1 driver in Nigel Mansell at Ferrari and still beat him in his own team. That is the definition of a fearless move and it's just something that rightly or wrongly would never happen now. Obviously car performance is always going to be a factor but I just don't see drivers now willingly want to step into another team with a number 1 driver, like Leclerc stepping into Red Bull to go up against Verstappen or vice versa with Max stepping into Ferrari to try and beat Leclerc. Similar to what I said with Lewis Hamilton, 
If Prost only ever had Jean Alesi caliber drivers as his teammate, then he probably wins the 84 championship, still wins the 85 and 86 championship to make it three in a row, and then without Senna, he probably never leaves McLaren and wins in 88, 89, 90, and 91 to make it four in a row, and if he still goes to Williams when they start to dominate and fall out with Mansell, he still wins the 93 title making him hypothetically an eight-time world champion. Well, there you have it. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below in terms of which drivers you think had the hardest run of teammates in their career. And if you did enjoy this video and want to support the channel, then don't forget to subscribe. That would be massively appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one.